Hey everyone, welcome to another $1,000 strap search. I've got my $1,000 in singles here and I'm about to show you what I found. But before I do, let's talk about this week's tip. Now, I see so many different errors or at least things that people are calling errors on eBay. I get I get a lot of texts, I get a lot of emails, uh, and people just showing me stuff asking if this is an error if this, or if it isn't. People will tell me, oh, I've looked at it under the microscope. Okay, <laughs> that's the first giveaway that they were coin collectors. Uh, coin collectors generally go under the microscope to find all the different variants and stuff on a coin. I want you to think about the process of making a coin. You are taking a hard metal disc and putting it in a collar so it doesn't move, and then it goes with a die on both sides under enormous pressure to make the coin. Not a lot of room for anything to go wrong, and if something goes wrong, it's usually going to be an obvious thing, um, or it's going to be an engraving problem. If it's an engraving problem, that's going to be on a number of uh, coins until they change the die. But that's pretty much it. There's not a lot that can go wrong in that process. When you're printing money multiple times, all kinds of stuff can go wrong. I mean, let's understand that the first printing is the back print. Um, and they can print this and then come back the, uh, days or weeks later and actually do the second printing, which is here. So right away, now you have a shot at stuff being off-center. Then they do a third printing, which is where you get the serial number. And the serial number, well, you've got rollers there with the uh, numbers. So yeah, sometimes the numbers don't line up. So what? As long as they're there, that's the important thing. If they're not perfectly aligned, like this one isn't perfectly aligned, that doesn't mean it's an error. That's just part of the printing process. You're also going to see this seal. This seal is going to move all over the place. In fact, if I go like this, you're going to see that seal jump all over. Sometimes it's low, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's left, sometimes it's right. It's not an exact science Okay, as long as one print doesn't interfere with another print, the note's fine. It's no big deal. With all the different things that can go wrong in the process, a very slight misalignment is not a rare thing. Um, if you want to call it an error, call it an error. But what makes notes worth money is how rare they are. So if you can go through one strap of notes and find five of what I'm talking about, that's not rare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you go through 300,000 notes and don't find any of a particular thing, well, that's rare. But yeah, if you can find multiple in one strap, yeah, not rare. And that's what you're ultimately talking about. If you like collecting notes that are off one way or the other in the seal, great. But that doesn't mean there's any additional value. And that, that's all I'm getting at. Um, if there isn't additional value, don't try to rip somebody else off <laughs> trying to pretend there's value because there's not. Whether that be from the seal being off, whether it be from the numbers being slightly raised or lowered. Um, like I said, these aren't errors. This is just what happens during the printing process. Much different than it is with coins. That's why you see such a minor thing with a coin being worth many, many times face value. And why you can see the exact same thing in paper money. And it's... It's, it's It has no additional value. So don't get sucked up into the error category. Unless you have a genuine error, and we'll get to that. All right, what, do I, what did I find this week? Let's get these out of the way. Here we go. Like this. See this? The only color ink is black and green. Okay, this is a grayish blue. All right? <laughs> and if I look here, you can see this line... Well, that corresponds with a fold, okay? That is not an error. It's the wrong color ink, and the fold is also after circulation. So, no, none of this is an error. What this may have been is this may have been inked really well, and a raindrop got on there. And let's say the raindrop was slightly more acidic. It could have easily caused some of this to come out there. So that's, you know, that, that's just one of a million different things that this can be here. This, not an error. 
All right, I've got an alternator. Uh, 6030504000 Zero is the alternator. Every other digit. Here's a trinary, zeros, sixes, and eights. This is fives, eights, and nines on this one. Twos, sixes, and sevens. And yes, that seven's a little dark. So what? <laughs> this seven's a little dark too. Oh, two errors. Must be worth twice as much. No, not an error. Uh, what do we got here? Zeros, threes, and sixes. And quads. Quad fives on this note. And a star note here. This is 2017A. Checking to see if they're filled. Once again, there is no such thing as a partially filled star. Okay? Uh, just like there's no such thing as being partially pregnant. You, it's either filled or it's not. There is no, there is no in between. Okay, so if you can see white, it's not a filled star. All right, uh, another star note. This is 2017. Another 2017 star. Another 2017 star. That one's in rough shape. Here's a 2013 star, starting with a couple zeros. So I like that. This is if. This one is number 73,047, so that's pretty low. Um, when you're talking about true low numbers, you want four to five zeros to start off there, uh, if not more. But whenever I see a couple zeros to start off a star note, that always gives me hope that it could be rare. I will look that up when I do my next uh, After the Hunt video. Uh, another 2013 here. 2013B, and this is at 3.2 million, so that is one of the potential duplicate notes. And another, still find them, 2013, that one is 01. Remember, you're looking for 096 technically, but 095 or lower on those to make them duplicate notes. Uh, let's see, 2009 star note, and some older notes here, 2003A, 2003A. 2003, with writing on it, so it's probably going to go away. 2003, 1999, another 99, not quite as nice. 1995, looking to see if it's a web note, it is not. And the oldest note, also a 1995, also not a web note. So that's what I found this week. What did I pull out? Well, this is another new addition, and yes, this is an error. Now, if I hold this up here, you can see there's nothing wrong with the printing. The print is just fine on this particular note. And if I flip it over, you can see the printing is fine on here. Some of you are going to start screaming, oh, no, it doesn't have in God we trust. Uh, no, that makes this constitutional. <laughs> uh, what is the error? That, that is the error. It is called a butterfly fold. A butterfly fold is when a portion of the page gets folded over and then the page is cut. If I was to take that and fold it right along that line, this little portion here will fit right in here exactly. Um, and these lines will match up with the cut lines. I wonder if you can, let's see, I'm looking, I'm just looking for positioning on here to see if I could tell. No, I can't tell the exact position because it's a silver certificate. But yes, that is connected. That is a legitimate error. Uh, I don't. I have never found one of these in circulation, um, so I most certainly have not found five in a single strap. Trying to find one of these is going to be tough. Most more often than not, someone that sees this may just rip that off, and boy, that would hurt. <laughs> that would hurt to have that ripped, because well, that's what makes this worth money. Let's take a peek. Instead of looking at the big book, I've got this one, uh, United States Paper Money Errors, Comprehensive Catalog and Price Guide. And here is a giant butterfly fold, but we're not looking for that. Now, even though this isn't full color, it does give you plenty of info. Like, for instance, here is, you know, cutting errors. This is literally a silver certificate with a butterfly fold, very similar to what I have. So now you're just looking at condition. Uh, and... EF, you're talking 150, so it's EF40. In about uncirculated, you're talking 250. Uh, choice uncirculated is 300, and if it's gem 65, you're talking 350. So you're talking a price range of 150 to 350 for that particular type of error, which is pretty much exactly what I got. <laughs> there it is in the book. There it is here. They call this one a minor error. 
uh, versus some of the bigger errors like this one here. Um, but yeah, mine's a minor error. We're talking 150 to 300. Now, what's cool about this book is it shows the error on a silver certificate. It shows the error on a Federal Reserve note, and there is a difference in price. You can see 150 here. And these here are starting at 50, 75, and so on down the line. It also shows different denominations. There's two, fives, you know, tens, twenties, fifties, you know, and hundreds. So that is extremely helpful. That, that's why this book is so helpful. Not only does it show you what the error actually is, it gives you a range as far as the different denominations, which makes it so much easier to price out. So that's what I've got for you guys this week. This is, like I said, a 1935, a series of 1935D silver certificate with that butterfly fold. If you learned anything new this week, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.